the traditional family is a business enterprise. Because liberal society considers one's, quote, career to be the defining character characteristic of the individual, we have largely forgotten that the traditional family was usually a business enterprise. The average family was engaged in farming, commerce, light manufacture, or a profession. And the family business was usually conducted close to the home, if not within the home itself. Often both parents were deeply involved with the family business, a custom that is vividly described in the Bible. Parents taught their children their business and children gained self-esteem as well as practical skills by contributing actively to the family livelihood. Where children went to school, this was balanced against responsibilities to the family business, and the family itself was often extended by the informal adoption of unmarried relations or of young men and women who were hired to help with the business and had no other home. So this is another observation, and this is the whole reason he's describing here why we started Family Inc. Um, and the whole reason we started that, a lot of people have said that, someone just posted today, a snarky comment that why did you guys why would you ever do such a thing why would you start a family like obviously just a, as a money grab i'm like no you you don't you don't know what we think about family this is a natural extension of our vision for what family is the biblical family the household and the traditional family all of them share these things in common and that is that they require a business asset building engine somewhere in the family it doesn't mean you can't have a career or a job there are ways to have a job as one of the income streams of the family, but you can, you got to think about your family as a as an economic um, entity. And this was completely normal for in every other form in history. Today, the, the the modern Western family is strictly a consuming entity, and the individuals are the only ones with any economic activity. That is incredibly unusual historically. And so he's pointing this out, and it's very difficult to build a household without beginning to create uh, economic engines through the family that uh, actually create cohesion. Uh, we experienced this dramatically. I had no idea this was true, by the way. This, this was something we, we discovered completely by accident, really. I was in ministry and when we started our first business, we moved to the North, Northern Kentucky area and I experienced something I, I wasn't expecting. I didn't see it coming. But as soon as we started a business, all the family members started to move towards our, our area. And, um, and, and for some, it happened immediately. Like when we opened our first business, April's sister moved from Manhattan to, uh, to Northern Kentucky to help us. April's dad would come down. Like he lived in Columbus two hours away. He'd come down for hour, like for days every week just to help us. April's brother moved here. Then my dad moved here. Then my sister. I mean, it was like, I, I was like, what is happening? Like we created a business and it created this vortex of all of a sudden reasons to come together. The opposite is what oftentimes happens with so many of the economic ways that we think about providing in, in our culture, which is that oftentimes when there is no economic engine, um, your children often are forced to find employment elsewhere. Like unless you live in a pretty diverse city where there's lots and lots of economic opportunity, um, even then, if you join a corporation, they could move you right now with remote work and there's career paths, I think that are much more friendly. And I think we need to be careful about pursuing some of those if we care about keeping our family together, but, but by and large, uh, an economic engine has all kinds of impacts on the kind of family you can develop. And we have to just be really honest about that and, and look at it carefully.